Hello out there. I'm Geronimo, and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. This last week has been completely nuts. The response to the first video just blew me away, and I can't wait to get back in the game and try to put together a world and a series that deserves all that kindness. So towards that, a quick announcement. I'll explain a little more in episode two, but the short version is I'm gonna be doing a lot of building now that we've got AE, and that feels more like a together thing, where we can all be part of shaping the story and the lore and the aesthetic of the world. So for anyone who's interested, or is like me, and just can't wait for more GTNH, or wants to see what I'm like off script, I'm gonna try to live stream on Twitch. We'll be doing lots of building and experimenting with decorations, maybe a little progression too, and pumping out positive vibes. I'll leave the link below. Give the stream a follow and come hang out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 p.m. EST. Hope to see you there. Also, one of the comments that came up a lot was about the way the world looks or the shader pack I'm using, and I thought it would be nice to put together a little tutorial. Fair warning, I have never done this, so here's hoping for the best. All right. I'm gonna try to do this as if you've never used shaders before, which is where we all were once. But if you're familiar with how to download and install them, feel free to skip ahead to the configuration bookmark if what interests you is the settings. Links for all the downloads are in the description. So first things first, you need Optifon and you need a shader pack. The link for Optifon's in the description. You'll want Optifon for Minecraft version 1.7.10. The GTNH wiki also has some details on which shader packs are compatible, but I personally use a version of complementary shaders called Complementary Neon, put together by SAMHSA, one of the GTNH developers, and it's available on his Discord. The link for that is also in the description. Uh, if you want to match my settings exactly, be sure to download the extra configuration file from that same Discord channel. It tones down the blast furnace coil brightness. Uh, and if you prefer something else, I'd suggest Silder's Vibrant Shaders because it only needs minor configuration changes for GTNH. All right, so after you've got your files downloaded, you can install Optifine. Um, I am using the Prism Launcher, so for me, it just means hitting the folder button to get to my Minecraft folder. You might have Minecraft installed somewhere else or be using a different launcher, but the rub is you got to get to the stop Minecraft folder. So once you do, you can get into the mods folder as well. And we're just going to drag Optifine in. Make sure you see move to mods. You want to be careful not to drag it into one of these other folders. If you see a move to mods, you're good. Just release the mouse button and drop it in. I already have, so I'm not actually going to release in here, uh, but you will want to just drag and release. Okay, back to the launcher. Uh, now that you got Optifine installed, you're just going to launch the game. And once the game is started, you can go into options and video settings, and you'll see a couple of new things down here that were added by Optifine. The one we want right now is shaders. Should be empty for now, and the shaders should be on off. Internal are actually not that bad, but we're here for the good stuff. So we'll open the shaders folder. It'll take us right in. So go back to where you have your downloaded files. Drag those right in. For complementary neon, you actually need to extract. For every other shader, you'd be done at this point. You can actually see they start to show up here in the shaders list in game. For this particular shader pack though, they will not work unless you unzip them. I'm gonna start with the uh, complementary neon here. Extract all. I'm going to delete this trail. If you don't, it just puts it in a folder inside this folder, and then you have to copy and paste, and it's just kind of a pain. So I just delete that directly into the shader packs folder. Tick, tick, tick. Got a lot of stuff in there. Q Jeopardy theme music, please. All right. Okay, and we're gonna extract this as well. This is that extra config file that if you want it to look just like mine, you will have downloaded. If you don't have this, at this point, you're done with this step. We'll extract again. Same thing, delete that last little folder trail and hit extract. This time it's gonna tell us there is a file already named complementary shaders underscore v4.6.txt. We are gonna replace the file. And now we're all set. You can now select the non-zip version of complementary shaders. It doesn't, it doesn't get named neon, that's all right. Select this one and it'll be enabled. We'll give this a sec to load up. Okay, so we've got the shader packs installed and enabled. Let's talk settings. So here are my vanilla settings. Graphics on fast, smooth lighting on maximum and dynamic lights on off. I don't really care for the hand torch thing. Smooth lighting though is really important. If you turn this down to really anything but maximum, the, the stretching or the kind of light scatter gets really blocky. So this kept, keeps it nice and smooth. It's named perfectly, uh, but I like to keep this on maximum 
anything else again is it's just not really awesome looking and with the optifine stuff there are actually a couple options here that don't impact the visuals much but they can help with fps quite a bit uh, in performance there is smooth fps fast render and fast math i do have fast math on I'm, I'm not sure if it makes a huge impact but it sounds pretty good <laughs> so i turned it on i haven't turned on the other ones yet but if i run into big problems down the road these will be the first ones i turn on Oh, and uh, if you're in a single player world, not playing on a local server or a multiplayer server, make sure you have lazy chunk loading off. Um, this has essentially like keeps lighting updates going in chunks you are not actively loading. There's like a peripheral boundary around the chunks you load that is kind of semi-loaded. And there can be a lot of lighting updates there. So you want to turn this off if you're in single player. If you're in multiplayer, it doesn't matter because the server controls chunk loading. So don't worry about it if you are in a multiplayer server. There's also animations. Uh, this is where you basically control all the particle effects and any animations like rain splatter. Uh, you don't run into this all the time, so it's not like a constant problem or drain on your FPS, but they are around. Machines have some particle effects. The EBF, for example, pushes out smoke, and that has an animation. So you can turn all this off. It makes the world a little flat, but in terms of the graphics and, and kind of look and feel around you, it doesn't really change that much. The rest are more aesthetic things that don't really affect performance that much. You can change the sky, the stars, and the moon. I haven't changed those. I really like the way it looks kind of out of the box, but feel free to change it if you want. All right, and now shader settings. Um, regardless of whether you're worried about performance, go ahead and turn old lighting on. This is for the architecture blocks, the sloped ones. This will, if without it, it just gets weird. They get off lit or off shadowed or off colored. Um, so you're going to want this on. And I turned shadow quality down to 0.5 here as well. This was mostly for FPS for me. With everything else enabled, uh, I needed to find some FPS somewhere. So I grabbed it from here. Next, I personally adjusted the waving stuff settings within world settings here. Uh, right here. I turned waving foliage off and waving leaves off. This is a lot. <laughs> there, this is like the leaves will shake. It's kind of with the wind it's supposed to be. It actually looks pretty cool, but because there's so many leaves around pretty much all the time if you're outside, this will really tank your FPS. So I turned it off. Also, the it only applies to vanilla leaves. So the other leaves, the modded trees do not wave, so it can look very uneven. All in all, I just recommend turning it off. So I haven't left anything else changed, but I did try a bunch of stuff as I was trying to sap out a couple of little extra FPS and see what I could do. So here's some quick hitters if you still need some extra gains. Uh, first, putting RP support on basic will have a huge FPS boost. You can see it even says it will mean high FPS. That's definitely true, but it does some really weird stuff to the lighting. For me, it was most obvious on the big GTNH logo that's kind of side lit. It has a really nice smooth white into blue gradient going that's caused by the light, which I really like. And when I turned this to basic, that got really weird looking. So be careful with this, but if you're really hurting for FPS, this will have a really, really big impact. Uh, fog can also be disabled. That's in world. Again, not something you're going to run into a lot, kind of like particles, but it on the edge of your world, you, you might see some fog. You can get rid of that. It might get you a little bit of FPS. The shadow quality can be tinkered with for some decent FPS gain too, uh, but it does affect the look quite a bit, especially if you, like me, you turn down that shadow quality setting on the main view to 0.5. Adjusting any of this stuff and also adjusting that, the shadows can get very, very blocky and not rounded or smooth at all. So if you need to change this, start by disabling the colored shadows first and go from there. If you're near water, disabling the water waves, just like the tree wave, um, or adjusting them down a little bit can be worth it. You can still have clear water, so keep that in mind. The clear water is a separate setting from Optifine, so that is not changed if you turn the waves off. Um, and last, in the material section, you can turn off reflections. But personally, this would be a last resort. That's it. And hey, stay positive out there.